Hi you guys, happy Thursday, welcome to my channel, Wholesale to Million, my name is Kong, and you guys, this is going to be my first interview, and um, so there are things pro I probably didn't do right, um, the quality of the video is actually not so great, so first off the bat, I want to apologize um, for the quality of the video, we're actually trying to do an interview over Skype, so with the internet connections, um, it is not so great, so I apologize for that. Um, but you guys, this is my first interview, so there are probably some things that I need to do and, 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 and should ask and, and etc. So you guys, help me out, drop me a comment and let me know, do you like this interview? Um, you know, if, if do you like it? Do you not? What kind of tips or advice um, um, can you give me so that way I know uh, what to do on the next interview? Like what kind, of, what kind of question I need to ask? Is it too long? Is it, you know, is it too long? Um, etc. Right? Any tips that I, any tips, advice that I can get from you guys um, to let me know what, what's, uh, how I can do it better on the next one? I would greatly appreciate it. As always, you guys, your guys' opinion, advice, um, I do, you know, I, 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 um, I do respect it. So please drop me a comment and let me know. And um, also too is if there's maybe um, also too is if there's anyone that you would like me to interview. Drop me a comment with their name and let me know who it is and I'll try to reach out to them to do the best I can to get them onto the channel um, and to have them share with you guys um, uh, some stuff that they are doing. Alright you guys, so drop me a comment, let me know who you would like me to interview next and I'll do my best to reach out to that person and see if we can get them on board. Alright? So, and you guys... In this interview, this guy is a powerhouse. He do a tons and a ton and a ton of deals. He has been an inspiration to me. Um, he's a great guy. Um, I don't, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't know him personally. Um, just watched a few of his video um, a while back, and um, I just like, I just really, really like his mindset and his personalities. And um, to me, I believe that 80% of what you do. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's mindset. So whatever career business that you're in, it doesn't have to be real estate. It could be anything. I believe that 80% is mindset and 20% is what you do to get you to um, to, to to become successful um, at whatever you're doing. All right. I truly, truly, really believe it is the mindset, not not exactly what you do, because the people uh, people that does it. You know, two people in the same field, and one made it and one didn't. It's all come down to you guys. It's the mindset. Why, what you think that's what gets you to doing what you're doing all right you guys so anyways you guys I hope you guys enjoy this interview and if you haven't subscribed to my channel smash that subscribe button um, if you are interested in learning about wholesaling houses and we do them virtually I do share and teach you guys everything in my channel and share with you guys so you guys can duplicate it <clears throat> and go create your own success all right and if you do like this video you guys don't be shy smash that thumbs up for me and I'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much you guys Bye. Rock and roll, baby. Okay, okay right now. You guys, all right, you guys. Welcome to my channel, Wholesale to Million. My name is Kong. And today is a very, very special day for me because I get to interview, um, you know, he's one of my inspiration. I don't know if he knows, but I watch a lot of his video on YouTube and he inspired me. This guy, I mean, he's a powerhouse, you guys. And, um, and, and I want to, and you know, and, and he is my first interview um, on my channel. And it's such a great pleasure to have him accept the invite, and I want to, uh, him to kind of share, um, to, to share him with you guys, and um, let's welcome him. And wait, before I get into that, you guys, I mean, this guy does multiple, multiple six-figure a month wholesaling houses in Memphis, Tennessee. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> you guys, let's welcome the one and only Brian Harris. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> It's your boy B. <laughs> right, right, right. Glad to have me on, man. I really appreciate you having us on, man. And uh, thanks so much for noticing. Thanks so much for uh, inviting us on the show. And we're happy to be here, man. Hey, thanks a lot. And um, uh, also, you know, I actually just just a couple weeks ago, um, I sent Brian a um, an invite to do it. And I said, hey, do you want me to send you some questions or do you want to do this raw, you know, the freestyle? And he said, you know what, Kong? Let's do it freestyle. freestyle. Everything comes from the heart, man. That's it. Speak from the heart, man. <laughs> so, you guys, this is my first interview and uh, we're pretty much just doing it raw. Um, I'm going to ask Brian some questions and uh, and you guys take notes. I, I promise you he's going to deliver some powerful information. 
um, to get you guys going or to get you guys scaling up on your wholesaling business. So, Brian, let's start with question number one. Is um, let's start with you know everybody wants to know you you know everybody wants to uh, first of all I like to get people inspired. So, could you share your story? Of how you got into um, uh, how you get into real estate? Well, I've been involved in real estate for a little over a decade now, but my my story goes back to when I was like 25, 26 years old. I had made a little bit of money in a software internet business that I had started, and I was staying at home with my parents, and so I wanted to you know learn how to hold on to that money or even grow it. And what ended up happening is I met I ran into an old. I started reading books, you know, buying courses, the usual. And then that led me in the right direction to know what to do next. And I started to ask around from old friends. I ran into a friend, Todd Sherman. I always give him his props because uh, I ran into him at the movie theaters. And he was like, hey, Harris, how you doing? I'm like, oh, my God, good to see you. I knew he was a real estate agent. And I was, you know, just a guy who had some money that wanted to invest in real estate. So I was like, man, Tosh, help me, please, help me, please. He says, you know what, Harris, I got you, man. You know, let's go look at some houses. We looked at some houses. We bought our first house together. And uh, we flipped that house and I was hooked. And from there, you know, we ended up flipping like, you know, close to over 100 properties in a short period of time, like literally like in 24 months. And at that time, that was also at the same time where the banks were kind of going down south like they were, you know, the recession was about to happen. And so me, I, I never experienced financial boom like that before. So I wasn't aware of an economic boom. I wasn't aware of a recession, but I learned very quickly. <laughs> What a recession was because that meant that the bank stopped lending money and that was how my whole operation ran. And uh, and so one thing leads to another, man, I had bought all these houses and then because they stopped giving loans to the end buyer, then guess what? I couldn't sell the houses. So now I got all these houses, right, that I was in it to flip it and not in it for residual. And I got stuck because I only had one strategy as an exit strategy. And I lost all those houses, man. I was devastated, lost my own personal home, ended up, you know, having to stay with some friends. Uh, we moved to North Carolina. Uh, we stayed in a beach house but if we moved to North Carolina we're sleeping in a twin bed man and it was me my sons and my wife all sleeping in a twin bed together and what ended up happening from there it was just like life changing it was like at that moment my sons were like two and three years old uh, or four years old and we're all laying in this twin bed together and I remember thinking to myself okay I got about three more years before they become conscious of remembering certain you know, events in their lives. And I will always want my sons to remember me in a light to where, you know, they only experienced abundance. They only experienced, you know, the proper mindset. So I made a decision right then to literally change my mind, change the way I think and get my family out of that situation and put us in the life of abundance. And so uh, one thing leads to another. I started reading more books, et cetera, started other businesses and ended up making millions of dollars and uh, learned how to wholesale as another form of exit strategy or purchase strategy, et cetera. And that just added on to, you know, what we were doing. And, and um, you know, as a business owner, sometimes you have up, sometimes you have downs. When I found out about wholesaling, the most amazing thing happened. I found out that I didn't have to have a lot of money to, to acquire real estate anymore. And that was the game changer for me. All I had to do was have a piece of paper, get it signed by the owner of a house, get another piece of paper and get that signed by an end buyer, put those, turn those into the title company and I can make the in-between money. So if this guy pays 50,000 and this guy's selling it to me for 10,000, I made $40,000. I was like, how many times can I do this? And somebody said, I, this, this is what happened. I live in an area in Memphis, Tennessee, where I would say the the uh, the goals are not as high. And the reason why here is because you can buy a mansion for two, three hundred thousand dollars in California. You know, it's millions of dollars to do that. So you don't really have to set super high goals. So I asked the people who were doing wholesaling here. I was like, hey, how many, you know, uh, houses do you do a month wholesaling? You've been wholesaling for years, Red. How, how much are you making? So somebody would be like, I'm making 3000 I'm making 6000 I'm like, a day or what? And they're like, no, a month. And I was like, okay, so why are you only making 3000 or 6000 Like, you can only, are you limited to the amount of deals you can do? And they're like, no, you know, it's just, you know, it's just good extra money. And I was like, oh, my God. So you mean I could do this with every deal I do? And so from that that moment, I set a goal. I was like, okay, I, I reverse engineered it. How much do I want to make? Okay, I want to make $100,000 in a month.
period. You know, and that be maybe a small goal to Donald Trump or Bill Gates, but it was a big goal for me, right? And so I was like, okay, so to make $100,000 a day, I divide that number by 30 days. That's how I figure out how, what, how much income do I need to make a day to hit my monthly goal. So I divided the number by 30, and it's $3,333 a day makes $100,000 a month. So now I, I decided what activity, I know I'm talking too much. You got some other courses I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So I, from, from there, I was like, okay, what activity do I need to do? So the activities that I needed to do that would generate three thousand dollars a day. So I, I, what I had to do now was just, just like, okay, I need to find a source to make offers. Once again, my funds were like up and down at the time, so I didn't have the money to spend like the gurus were talking about. Spend. $10,000 on mailers, spend, you know, $2,000 a month on pay-per-click. I didn't, I didn't want to go that route because I was like, I wasn't too sure. And I didn't have like a true mentor guiding me along the way to tell me the best way. So I said, okay, $100,000, $3,300 a day and $3,333 $3, a day. And what I needed to do, my activity was I needed to be able to make offers because I know I study Michael Jordan, and he shoots the ball. He shoots the ball. He misses a lot, but he shoots the ball, right? Kobe shoots the ball, some of the greatest players in the world. So I needed to shoot the ball. And in this case, the ball was making offers to sellers. So as I started, um, you know, I was like, okay, so how can I find motivated sellers? One, Zillow. I went to Zillow and I studied Zillow. I've been like up all night. My wife, she knows when I get into the money making mode, I get focused. Like it's like nothing else exists to me. Like I have to make it happen. And so I'm up all night and I'm studying Zillow. I'm finding out how to filter the searches so that I can get to all of the leads that they put on their sites for free. So I would go in and I would make offers to sell by owners. I would make offers to uh, 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 pre foreclosures. I would find the owners of those and I would go and skip trace that information. And contact those owners, and I was making offers every day. So I would probably make probably about 40 text message offers because I knew that my time was valuable. And if a person wasn't, you know, going to respond to my offer, I didn't want to be on the right. phone with them talking about their life story, right? Because time is right. Money, right? It's like I don't have time to hear right. you want my offer, yes or no. So I'm texting offers. Hey, look, will you take this for it? So they're asking fifty thousand. Hey, will you take five thousand dollars for it? And lo and behold, this lady was like, I won't take 5000 but I'll take thirteen. I was like, oh, my God. So <laughs> what that gave me is if I had made 100 offers, you know, and I got one, and for me, that was very successful, I ended up making $3,000 off that deal, right? So now what I did was some people look at that as activity, and they say, man, I'm not making money for calling 100 people or texting 100 people. So how do you stay motivated as an entrepreneur? What I did in my mind was, Every no or every non-response to my offer was a dollar amount to me. So if I made $3,000, I want to write this down almost. If I made $3,000, I divided that by 100, right? And that gave me the average of what each no was valued at. Each no was valued at $30. $30 times 100 got me one close, right? And so now I was like, okay, I want to get, you know, enough no's to reach my $100,000. So now I knew the amount of activity that I needed to have so that, or how many no's that I needed to have to make $3,000 a day, right? All I need to do is make 100 offers a day to get my $3,300. And that's what I did. I went in beast mode with it, bro. And when I say relentless, I know some of my methods, people are like, damn, you do all that? Like, yes. Like, I'm, I'm crazy enough to do the... The impossible. I'm cr if you, if I know that it works, and somebody's done it before, because people make millions a month wholesaling. So if I know that it works, and I, and somebody's done it before, I want to do it next. So that's my story, man. <laughs> Dude, Brian, that is awesome, man. As you guys can see, how energetic Brian is. I mean, he got all the energy inside of him, and um, <laughs> and uh, you, you see that you know the thing about Brian. That, that that have me respect him so much is you know it's, it's not just that it's not just that you're making a boatload of money Brian but it's it's your mindset because you know it's it's like it's like a diet it's like it's eighty percent it's eighty percent of mindset and twenty percent is actually what you do and that's why I respect you so so much man because your mindset is so strong that it allows you to overcome any setbacks any diversities any brick wall 
Um, so, dude, I mean, that's that's awesome. What a great story. What well, a great story. I'd say the biggest thing that I did, you know, because, of course, we can all choose to make money in anything that we do and be successful at it, you know, if we, like you said, have the right mindset. So, in that transition, I chose to become a student of, you know, mental development. I mean, I have hundreds of books, you know, that I read different ones every day. I probably read, like, five, six hours a day, you know, throughout the day. And when I say read, I'm not sitting there reading whole books, like 300 pages. I ain't no speed reader like that. But what I do is I read a couple pages out of a book and something from that, when I open it up, it blesses me. And I want to read, you know, so that I'm always a sponge so that I can, you know, apply information. But I read, I, I made myself study the power of the mind. I was like, man, there's something to this, this mental, this thought world that, you know, for some time I only identified myself with this, you know, this, this skin, right? And I'm like, man, there's something to my brain that I'm not fully aware of, but I want to learn it. And so what ended up happening, bro, is I um, I read a book, Think and Grow Rich. I watched the movie The Secret, but that led to me buying and buying and buying more and more books. And then I seeked out uh, mentors that were, you know, uh, mentors on mind development. And they taught me so many things, man, to literally transform my way of thinking. And they told me, you know, other things as well. That's probably too much for this, but... Man, it just literally changed everything for me because it kind of backed up my belief system. I was raised as a Christian. Now, you know, I am, I believe in Jesus and everything else, but I understand a lot of the principles that the Bible talked about as well. And it's almost like a, a biography for you to read as a roadmap, to be honest with you. It's kind of like, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you really unfold that message, it's just simply saying like, look, whatever you think you're going to be. And so if it's that simple, then if I if the Lord said that I'm trusting and I'm standing on that faith that if I'm thinking it, I have it now. So now I just get to watch what everybody else hasn't seen yet. Right. I already know. I'm like, oh, you're just now seeing that I make one hundred thousand dollars a month. I made one hundred thousand dollars a month when I was in that twin bed. You get what I'm saying? The hundred thousand dollars a month was made right then. Then I just had to wait for everybody in my family and all of you all to come see it. And then you enter into the life and, and you know, we take it even further. And so now we can help others do the same thing because now when we understand that once you see it here, done. Next. Once you see it here, done. Next. It's like ass given, ass given. And it's so fun when you like understand that, you know? Nice, nice, nice. So I think you went out on me uh, for a second. It's like your computer connection. I'm still um, here though. <laughs> Hold on just a second. All right. Um, I don't see you, but I can hear you. But, uh, I see you. Uh, you, you. Okay. Well, great. Right. So yeah, you know, <laughs> Brett, right when you mentioned the, uh, you know, it's either the book or the movie, The Secret, and Think and Grow Rich. The, uh, the book, The Secret, is what changes my wife's life. Think and Grow Rich, too, is what changed my life. I've never read a, uh, I've never read a book in my, I've probably never finished reading a, a book yep. in, in, in my life, Brian. But when I came across Think and Grow Rich, I didn't read it, but I was listening, I, I got, I down the video and I was watching the YouTube um, of it, like every single day, and, yeah. that, and that's what changed my mind. Yeah, yeah. And that what kind of got me the whole shift um, and, and kind of changed my life. That's exactly right, man. So, so it, it's, it's kind of how uh, common you, you brought that up. So, Brian, next, next question is, uh, could you share with us kind of where, kind of where your business is at right now? Like, kind of, kind of share what, you know, kind of where you're at, what you're doing, um, and things like that. So, at the... So at this point in our business model, what we do is our whole end goal was to, you know, not allow what happened the last time happen again. And that was done because one, we only had one stream, but two, more importantly, we didn't have any residual income to match our residual debt or, or bills that we had accumulated. Right. So if you have monthly residual bills, you need residual income to, you know, that outseed, exceeds that. So our goal starting out was, you know, to build something where we can, you know, increase our cash on a consistent basis so that we can buy assets that, and to us assets represents things that pay us every month, but so that we can buy assets that pay us a residual income every single month, no matter whether we do anything or not. So, because I, I, what I wanted more is I love staying in that, that twin, that, that beach home, but not the twin bed. I wanted it to be my own beach home. And so you know, I, I loved the, the fun that we had, et cetera, you know, as we were regrouping and rebuilding our mental mind state. So I, I, I enjoyed that. 
And so, and I also enjoy helping people, et cetera. So, you know, the things that I enjoy the most, that's what I wanted to do and spend time with my family. And so what allowed me to do that is by get, learning about how to wholesale, you know, well, one, getting my mind right, right? Asking God for the wisdom, not the money and getting my mind right. Once I did that, boom, then I started to, you know, do things, you know, to read, develop my mind and saturate my mind with the right positive way to think. I found out about wholesaling. <clears throat> wholesaling allowed me to use, you know, get, get properties with no money at all and acquire large sums of cash. Then the next thing was to buy houses with that cash. I didn't want to, you know, necessarily, you know, have it just sitting in the bank and nothing to do with it. If, if you if you don't have a place for money to go, it will leave you every single time. It will leave you in bills. It'll find a way to get out of your way because money holds a vibration of energy that means movement. Money is movement. Money is, is energy. And it always wants to move. That's the vibration of money. So people think that they can save money and they mentally are instilled with the belief of saving for a rainy day. Well, guess what? That money has an energy of movement and it will become a rainy day if you believe that's what you're saving it for so that it can keep moving away from you and flow. So understanding that money flows, then when you ask for a certain amount of money mentally, then you need to have a place for that money to flow to. So it needs to be an open vessel. If money comes to you and stops in a saving account, if money comes to you and stops in a safe or under your mattress, guess what? You clog the end pipe. You clog the vessel. You got to open up that fist and give it, and then you'll just start to see the floodgates open if you keep that current mindset. So now my whole mission to answer your question is not only to continue to build massive amounts of residual income, but I've tell, told several people around me, I am... The I want to be the legacy of the, you know, the Rockefellers, the John Paul Gettys, etc. I want to be massive in a way, but not just from a financial standpoint, that too, from an overflow of abundance continuously, but from helping millions of people around the world, you know, realize who they are, where they came from, a child of the most high, and then take them to something that they never dreamed of. And that's my mission now to help as many people as possible in the world you know, to realize their goal. So they have like these little apps right now to where if I don't speak the language of somebody, I'm going to record it so that the app can record it with my same energy in a different language for us so that everybody can feel this. That's my mission right now, man. Dude, Brian, that's, 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 that's awesome, awesome, man. That's, man. that's, awesome. that's awesome. So, hey, so, I, 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 hope I hope you guys get, you guys some, get inspiration some inspiration from, from, that. from that. Um, but, um, but, Brian, but, but, Brian, after hearing you after after say that, dude, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that's going inside my head right now, dude. So, so, I really appreciate that. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Brian, question number three. It's all. A uh, new beginner, uh, new and you know, it's probably the majority of them that are on uh, my channel right now are right new, new beginner or trying to get into the wholesaling business. business. What are some what tips are some that you can get for new beginners so they can start? So they can start so they can start so doing their first wholesale deal. Okay, so I would say the the biggest thing is what I share with people all the time. Like, and some people, <clears throat> a lot of people, uh, like would ask the question. I would even say, you know, the the higher ups who have made it. Why do I give out so much information for free? It's because really anything, any piece of information you can get for free, to be honest with you. And so it's just like my whole mo is to over de over deliver in value. So I want to be the person that you get so much value from, and I'm, I'm answering your question still, but to get so much value from to where you go out and win to where now you're like, okay, you know, that, that really helped me make, you know, $50,000. Like what else you got, right? I'm come on in here so I can give you this mental wisdom because once a person experiences financial success, they're more open to receive what, and then I can tell them the cause of what they got. The cause was changing their mindset. So, um, what would I tell a person? Number one, and I, I feel like most courses are really, you know, missing this, is if you don't change the way you think now, you will never change your situation. I see so many people in life. This is really important. I'm going to get to the mechanics, but remember, mental is 80, 90 percent of your entire life. So, you know, I see so many people wrestling with circumstances or events it's almost like it's almost like my son drew this my son drew this this uh painting right here my uh four-year-old son <laughs> right and so it's almost like if if you wrestle with effects or events in your life or circumstances or negative people in your life you know what that's like that's like an artist drawing a painting 
and then say, why are you over here? Why are you doing this? And see how crazy that sounds? That sounds retarded, doesn't it? Why are you, why do you look, why are you this color, right? That's what that's like. It's like the artist, the mastermind, drawing a painting and getting mad at the painting for the way it's looking now. So what I'm saying is, it's not the, the painting, it's the mindset. And once you change the mindset, then you draw the right picture, man. That's what I'm saying. So, and it's like, that is the number one thing I would tell them to start their change now. Change the way they think. And when they change the way they think, they will change who they become. And the other thing is, when you want to get to the mechanics of real estate, then everything else will unfold. I'm going to talk some about it because I know that's what this is. But everything else will unfold because you know what? I can't make the right seller show up. I know how to market my butt off, right? I can't make the right buyer show up. My techniques are simple <coughs> and easy to do, and most of them are free. That's what we teach. You know, start, do what you can, where you are, what you have. And so most of my techniques are free, you know, so you don't have to spend a lot of money trying to, to, to input them into your business. But nobody can make that. What makes that? What makes the right person show up in your life? Here. What makes the right deal pop? What makes you do, like, one thing is, I was like, babe, I want to make $100,000 from one deal. And so she, my wife is so amazing, dude. Like, she, you're talking about a queen that fits a king. She bags me. Like, I don't care, like, if it's zero in the account. And I'd be like, babe, I want to take whatever check we're about to come in, and I want to dump it all in on this. What you think, babe? If anybody can do it, you can do it. Let's do it. And I'm like, damn, wow. I got a ride on like this, you know? <laughs> Their thoughts were a lot different than us talking about the sports game 
that came on last night, right? Or talking about go getting some drinks, yeah. right? And that's all we do is talk about getting drinks. Or talking about some fine girls with some nice booties, right? That 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 you get what I'm saying? So those conversations, I'm not saying they don't exist up here, but it then automatically when you're talking about those things, it shifts. All right, so look, how are we gonna get this money? You know what I mean? Like it's always the next business yeah. idea. And so that motivated me, that put me in a new vortex. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. <clears throat> When you're around abundant people, whether they're abundant in, in, from internal, abundant financially, etc., that means that they're filled up. And if they're filled up, that means what? They overflow. And if you are around it, guess what you're going to get? Some of that overflow on you too, right? Yeah. And so you start to get drip and dribbles, and then all of a sudden, you're getting filled up off drops. <laughs> you're getting filled up off drops, dude. And as you start to get filled up, and then just like, <laughs> you filled up, you start to overflow. And guess what? You get to do podcasts and share that information with everybody else. That's how it happens, man. You can't you can't pour into somebody else's cup until yours is filled up. So you, that means that you got to take care of internal self first. Fill yourself up from the inside, and you will overflow with the rest of the world. And then that overflow will overflow with others. And others, and others. it'll be a ripple effect. You will be the ripple in the universe to put a dent in the universe for your legacy. Make sure that whatever you do, you're doing it so that your name can be remembered in history. You know, the wisdom that you share is not necessarily, you may not get a, a, a statue or anything, but the things that you share plants in other people, seeds, etc., that was inspired by the originator of the thought, which is, you know, from the inside. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, my, one of my friends, Ahim, my, my mommy, I can't pronounce his name, he's Israeli, and <coughs> he's got, but he always used to remind me when I started. He said, Brian, remember to collect moments, not things. So this, even this Christmas, you know, our, our thing with this Christmas is we're giving our kids experiences more so than gifts. I sent them a couple gifts, but they have bigger gifts for experiences. And it's like those moments, they are always cherished. Those toys that they get, they're going to be done with them in a couple hours after they open the gift. You know what I mean? My son, we took him to Odell Beckham camp. It was a pretty penny, right? And But he got to meet Odell, his favorite NFL player at the time, shake his hand, take pictures with him. Odell Beckham threw a ball to him, etc. And he caught it, and he ran a touchdown. It was just like, ah, he will always remember that. So collect moments, not things. And life is about moments. And when you enjoy this experience and you create it on purpose, it becomes so fun. So the next thing, <laughs> let me know when my time is up, man. We we twenty nine minutes in. Yeah. The, the next yeah, thing yeah. is, um, is uh, let's go to the mechanics. So like so now, once you get your mental in order, you start studying books, hanging around the right people, etc., and saturating your brain, you know, on a mental basis. And when I say saturate, I'm talking about be crazy enough to where you saturate your brain. Literally, twenty the, all of your waking hours and while you sleep, you have to reprogram your brain or else your old way of thinking represents itself. Because here's the other thing that I, before I get into the mechanics, and you may say, man, I didn't know I was coming to a, a, a thought session. <laughs> Keep going, that. man. The, the, the other thing that I, I realize is, um, I forgot that thought, so I'll keep going. So the mechanics, the mechanics of real estate is, you know, Putting or rever reverse engineering your goals. Reverse engineering your goals. When you reverse engineer your goals, what you then do is you you know the end result. You you know where you need to be. And so that's what I was going to say. So now you got to identify with, you know, how does it feel to have what it is that I want? And I want, I want you to understand what I'm saying here. When you want something, when you want something badly enough and you don't have it yet, you may say, I want such and such. And that's a state of consciousness. That's a state of being, meaning if I want something, you know what? I'm going to get. I hear people say that. Like, I'm going to get that. You're going to always stay in the vortex of going to get that. It's always going to be something that you're going to do. But when you become what it is that you want, when you take on the skin of the environment of what it is that you want, you know, mentally take it on, like meaning like if I, if I want a million dollars and I have a place for that million dollars to go, then that means I want that. I need to have that million dollars to do something with it. And so that I may think that I need a million dollars so that I can buy a million dollar house. I'm just using that as an example. So instead of, you know, thinking about the million, 
because the million is going to move whether you, you know, have it in your possession or not. Think about the what that you want it to buy. OK, so don't think that you got to buy it. Somebody can give it to you. That's the way this all works. So how does it feel to be in a hundred thousand dollar a month business? That means that if you have a hundred thousand dollars a month business, then that means you're going to wake up to accepted contracts in your email. You're going to wake up to emails that say, you know, the title company, we're closing today. You know, your check is ready. Your fifty thousand dollar check is ready. You got five or 10 emails in there. So now when I visualize this, when I go into the mental lab is what I call it, I close my eyes in my meditation and I do my meditations every two hours. I dominate my brain with this stuff, man. And so like, it's not oh, accidental wow. is what I'm telling you. It's on purpose. It's intentional. So I dominate my brain with this. And I, when I go in the lab, I say, I see, you know, <coughs> myself clicking on, I touch the mouse. Okay, I'm looking at the computer. I touch the mouse in my visualization. I feel my fingers scrolling the mouse on the email. I involve all of my five senses. It's called multi-sensory visualization. I see it with my eyes. I hear the bing sound on my emails as they come through. I smell the scent of my cologne in my house. Or, or, or my wife, et cetera, as I'm working on the email, et cetera. I smell, if I had a, a child that had pooped everywhere, I would smell the doo-doo, something that, that, you get what I'm saying? I would smell the environment, yeah. and I would include my all of my five senses. And then as I look at the email from my my title company, says, your check is ready. Brian, you want us to wire this $100,000 check, or you want us to, to – uh, uh, you want to come pick up your check. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to come get it. I need to see it, right? I need to see what it feels like. And so I'm in that moment right now. And I change it. What, what visualization does like that is it changes your molecular structure because now you're operating in a different realm, in the, in the spirit realm. And now you come back and that spirit comes back and it affects the body. Now, most people do this in a negative way. Most people do this in a way to where they let their mind just wander off and they're sitting there stuck and they're thinking about all of the problems and they're creating regardless whether they know it. And when they create those problems, et cetera, you know, in their mind, they come back and it affects their physical body. How? Because they're now worrying. They're sad face. You know, like, oh, my God, something that hasn't happened yet. It only happened in their mind. They're sad about it now. What I'm telling you is learn how to tame that imagination because the imagination is a – a horrible master, but it's a wonderful servant. It will obey you when you put the control in it, okay? So learn how to tame that imagination. And there are biblical verses that back up what I'm saying. We're not going to go there now. But the other thing is I see so many people wrestling with effects and circumstances, you know, and, and, and it's just like, okay, change your thinking, change your thinking. And it just you got to remember that your past thoughts, every thought becomes form. Thought is a, a different world that if you're not operating in it, that don't mean it doesn't exist, okay? It's always going on. And so when you operate in that world, that means that you understand that it's a law. I call it hashtag it's a, it's a law. <laughs> it's like gravity. If you jump off the top of this house right now, you're going to fall and hit the ground. You jump off the building, you're going to fall and hit the ground. If you think a thought, it's going to manifest into reality. <coughs> thoughts become things. If you think a thought, it attracts the same similar thoughts. To bring it into reality. So a lot of people say, I would never think of anything like that to happen to me. They get offensive when they realize that they're the creator of their problem. They say, I would never think of anything like that to happen to me. You think I would think of something like that to happen to myself? And then, <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's almost like you point a finger at somebody else, how many point back at you? Three, right? <laughs> it goes back to that. So now, when you realize that you are the creator of your thoughts, then what you got to understand is when you start thinking right now, your thoughts have to confront you. They must confront you. Because if it wasn't, then God's word from inside of you comes back void. His word, scripture tells us, that will never, ever come back void. Ever. And the internal word that comes out of you always becomes flesh. So it's these principles in the Bible that are operating when people get to understand them. Now they start speaking, you know, the right words. But now, so when those problems come confront you because of your residual effect, your body is walking in your past. Your body is walking in your past way of thinking. Don't attach to the past thoughts that are confronting you. That's just something that just has to go on, pass on by. You know, see it way. Hey, how you doing? See your ass later. You know, I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. No more. All right, bye, bye, bye. And you don't emotionally yeah. involve yourself with it, right? 
if a person wants to argue with you, you know, oh my God, you mother, oh my God, you're emotionally involving with it, right? Let it, you know what? You're right. I apologize. You know what? I, I'm so sorry. You have a great day. That throws so many people off. They're like, wait, I wanted to argue with you, right? But when you kill it, what yeah. do you mean, kill it with kindness? Keep it moving. Hey, you know what? I'm sorry. You know what? What's the solution to this? That's my question. You know, I'm not saying I'm not human. I'm not saying I never, you know, want to argue or have been in an argument. We get what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is you got to now rise above that situation and say, okay, what's going to be the solution to this? You start thinking from a different realm, and then the solution is simply saying, okay, how do we solve this? Right? So when you do that, it stops everybody. Okay, you know what? How do we solve this? How do we fix this? You know, I apologize. People like, because people have a secret lust for arguing. People have a secret lust for negativity. And so when you choose to operate from a positive mindset, guys, I'm telling you, it literally changes your life. And so the next thing that you do is once you do all those things, you go into, you know, reverse engineering your goal. That means setting the end result and visualizing yourself receiving the emails or even holding the check. Like this is like I said, I just made my affect your physical body and your visualization. And then now what happens is you come back from the spirit realm. And the God guides your body is to do the right thing. He's going to present the right people. You're just going to start to see people show up in your life. You'd be like, oh, my God. When you when you know what you're doing and you see people that show up in your life, you know. But the thing is, most people get it. And what we tend to do is we give credit to, oh, it happened like that because this happened. And that guy met this guy. And we give, you know, that credit to the outer effects of the way that God orchestrates it all. The great thing about all of this is you don't have to concern yourself with the how. How something is going to happen is not your jurisdiction. And when you try to figure out the how, you go into worry, depression, etc. Because you see something that is impossible that has to happen. It's impossible, right? The way certain stuff happens, me making $100,000 a month coming from Westwood. You know, Westwood is the inner city of Memphis, Tennessee, right? People get killed down there all the time. People, kids sell drugs. The kids are selling drugs. Women are, are prostituting in that area, right? So the, the what I'm saying is when a person like me can do something like that, guys, I'm telling you, it's literally just a power of the mind, changing your the way you think, guys. And you literally affect the universe when you make the decision to change. You may think so, so when the impossible happens and you see the impossible happens and you say in your mind, you say, okay, if I want this $100 million and all this stuff got to happen and that can't happen. Well, you're defeating yourself because you're speaking from a conscious mind and not from the most high, right? And so now you got to let God do what he do. You got to let him put that person on a plane in China that's ready to, you know, fly and send you a billion dollars. You asking for a hundred million and they ready to stroke you a check for a billion dollars. And he bumped into your, your wife in a coffee shop and she tells him that, man, my husband does this and he has access to hundreds of houses. He said, well, well, can he get more? What's his number? He calls you. You talk to him on the phone. Next thing you know, you got a billion-dollar deal in your hand. At, watch the stories and the histories of some of the greats. They'll tell you, I didn't know. That's what I started doing. I started studying the greats. I'm talking about Andrew Carnegie, John Paul Getty, John D. Rockefeller, Vanderbilt. Study the greats. The men who built America is a great story to watch on the History Channel. Go to Amazon, buy it. It's $14.99. And watch every single person who had a major effect on this uh, America that we live in now. How they didn't know, never knew how it was going to happen, but because they had a vision that they believed in, everything else unfolded for them. Many of them were in bankruptcy, filed it several times on the brink of bankruptcy, of losing it all, and now they're the richest men in the world of their time. They were the dinosaurs of their time. So what I'm telling you is I want you to understand that this is a wholesaling, you know, uh, channel, but wholesaling ain't it. It's the mind. Once you get the mind, wholesaling becomes like one of the ways that the Lord uses to send the abundance to you. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian. I mean, um, so yeah, so, 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 so basically, um, I guess share, share, um, share some of the mechanics for um so, yeah, so, yeah if you could so now what i would do is i would go to zillow and when i go to zillow i would search i would filter the search to uh say um 
for sale by owner. So at the top, it has a little drop down button. You change it to for sale by owner. The thing is, you're going to see a price. Here's the thing that you got to understand the psychology. Anybody who wants to sell a house, they put on the house how much they want to sell it for, and they're trying to get the market value, right? But then what you also got to look at is Zillow tells you how long it's been out there for sale on Zillow. So if you find something that's been out there for 60 days, 90 days, and we're in a booming economy, right? We're in a booming economy right now as far as real estate. Then you got to understand the psychology. He, he wants that full value, but obviously he ain't getting that full value. And if he got it out here for sale on Zillow, still, he wants to do what? Sell it, right? So understanding that, then I'm going to shoot him the offer that worked for me and my buyer. So if I'm going to use even numbers. Matter of fact, I think you can see this pretty good. I think. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah. if he's asking $100,000, right, mm -hmm. then my buyer, this is really good information. My buyer is going to pay me 70% no matter what. That's all in cost. My buyer is going to pay me 70% for a house. In, the area, in this area that he's desiring. So one, I got to know what my buyers want. How do I find my buyers? I find buyers all day long on Craigslist. I find buyers all day long on, on uh, uh, social media. Real buyers. I find buyers all day long from networking groups, etc. I find buyers in various ways, okay? Once I find out buyers, I find buyers from my own personal network, doctor friends, big time pastors, etc. Every one of us know some. It's somebody in your circle right now that's ready to buy real estate and is going to probably buy real estate within the next 30 days. But you could be the person that helps find them what they're looking for. And guess what? You can get in between the money by getting them to sign the contract for the deal that you found. So now, most typical buyers pay 70% of the value, 70% of the value. So that means that if the house is worth $100,000, then the way you do that is 100,000 times 0.7. That's going to give you how much they're willing to pay for, not for the house, but for the house, the rehab, and guess what? Your fee. All right? So that means that me and my mindset, I always want to make $10,000 from a deal. Minimum. Okay? Now, I'll take $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. I'll take $500. I'll take, you know, Oatmeal is better than no meal. Remember that. So. <laughs> I like that. Bro. Right. So now I'm going to subtract my fee out of there, and that's going to give me $60,000 that I got to work with as far as an offer. Then I'm going to ask him, how much work does he think it needs? And he says, it needs a little bit of work. It needs a, um, just a medium amount of work, and it, or it needs um, a gut job. It's a complete gut job. The way I figure that number is this. I, if it needs little to no work, I take, I'm, I write down $5. If it needs a minimum amount of work, I write down $10. And if it needs a good job, I do $15 to $20. I multiply these numbers times the square footage. Okay? So I'm not trying to do no books or analyzing or some software that's going to tell me how much repair cost is. I ain't got time for that. Right? I want to make money. Today is about making money. I wake up every morning. Who got it, right? Who got my money today? Maria tell you, who got my money today? So that's that Grant Cardone talk. So depending on what these yeah. this is, I say $5 times, if it's 1,000 square feet, that means it's going to be $5,000. If it's 1,000 square feet, it's going to be $10,000. If it's 1,000 square feet, a gut job is going to cost uh, $15,000. So let's just say it really doesn't need that many repairs. He said, man, look, you can just really walk in and move in it right now. It just may need to pay. That's $5. That means I'm going to subtract $5,000 from the leftover amount, which is going to give me $55,000. Right? So now, is my offer to him going to be $55,000? No. Why? Because every person, if they're unless they're, you know, like really ready to go today, most of them want to negotiate. So my first offer to him may be forty-five to forty-seven thousand dollars. Okay? Forty-five to forty-seven thousand dollars. I'm gonna show my people this. Forty-five to forty-seven thousand dollars. So my first this is my, my final offer though. Does that make sense? My final offer is that number there. Final is that your final offer? All right, is this last number, this, this number that I came up with immediately. Then my next offer is, you know, my, my first offer is going to be $10,000 less. So I'm offering $45,000. My next offer is going to be forty-seven dollars to $50,000. All right. 
And then my final offer, if we, if we can't meet, you know, reach that that area right there, then my next offer, that's my final offer, unless I want to eat into my, my feet. Does that make sense? So if I, if I decide to eat into my feet, then I can start taking that number up a little bit higher. But I can tell you something like this. If this guy says, oh, I drop my, my, um, I drop, okay. If this guy says something like, hey, look, um, if I know I'm going to make 10 grand, he says, look, we're at, you know, $57,000 or $59,000. Yes, I'm going to take it. If that's going to get the deal done, because I know I got a $70,000 buyer on the other end, ready to close. I find out how some of my buyers can close. See, I, I don't really sell to wholesalers as much because they're, they, they're looking for buyers, and I know how to find a buyer right now, right? So I got my buyers in place, and I asked my buyers, hey, look, if I find a deal, how fast can you pull that cash from up under your mattress, right? And they say, they say something like, uh, I'll be ready to close. Some of them don't even know what title companies is. So they'll say, I, I'll, I'll bring you the cash tomorrow. Like, dang! So when I realize that and I got somebody that's ready to pull the trigger tomorrow, then I'm going to hunting. So now it's almost like being in a position where you get a grocery list, you get a grocery list from, uh, you know, the end buyer. So it, just imagine if you were shopping for the elderly. You go to their house, you get the grocery list, right? Boom. Thank you so much. All you got to do is go to the store, the grocery store, and then pick out the items. You know what sometimes you can do? You can just make a phone call to the grocery store, and then they tell they have the bags waiting for you. And so that's when you kind of get into advanced wholesaling. You call your banks, and you got a relationship with banks, and they say, look, I just got a block of 100 uh, you know, foreclosures that's non-performing, and we want to sell them. We'll sell them at this price. We'll sell them to you at 55 cents on the dollar. If he had 55 cents on the dollar, then he got 100 of them. That means that I'm going to make $10,000 100. I got a million dollar check coming by the end of the week. You with me? So that's kind of how you're looking at it, man. That's the mechanic. Nice. Yeah. Nice, 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 Brian. Hey, nice, nice, Brian. Hey, the, 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 thanks a lot for the, thanks a lot for, the, thanks a lot for all those great information, Brian. That's awesome, man. So uh, hopefully for those of you who are, um, you know, who haven't done your wholesale deal, um, hopefully you take the advice of what Brian is giving you, take action on it, because obviously without actions, um, nothing is going to happen. So Brian, thanks, thanks a lot for that. But uh, one, la one last question uh, before I let you go here, because it um, <clears throat> seems like I've got about, we got about like less than 10 minutes here. So one, one last question is, Brian, it's, now, for those have already, you know, maybe for those who already start doing a couple deals already, how do they get? How do they scale up and get that consistent, that consistently uh, monthly uh, income? Because I know for myself, you know, when I first started, I started doing a couple deals, and then it was like trying to figure out how do I get a consistently because it, it goes up and goes down, and, and you want it to be consistent, so you know that hey, you know what. I'm ready to quit whatever uh, my job is or whatever that is uh, that I'm doing and, and I can go uh, full time on this. So my question for you would be uh, for those that, that wants to scale up, what kind of step, what kind of step do they need to take to, um, to, to scale up in this? Business? All right. So the first thing I would say, of course, I always start with the call, but I'm not going to go as deep as I did there. But the first thing is you describe so the, the entrepreneur that's listening to this that's on the next level already. You know, you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year or two hundred thousand, you're hitting your goals, right? But as an entrepreneur, you're hitting boom, boom, right? Boom, boom, you're up and down with it. For that person, that is the a, a result or an effect of uh your internal thermostat level. Boom, boom. So if you think about it, I want you to put this in relationship to your house. <clears throat> in your house right now. You know, when the temperature, you know, is set at a certain amount, it's set, let's just say it's 72 degrees right now. It's cold outside. So it's set at 72 degrees, right? And if it's set at 72 degrees, then when the temperature in the house rises to 72 degrees, then guess what? The thermostat level kicks off. And then the temperature starts to go back down again, right? And then guess what? And it gets down to, you know, 65 or 60, it's, it's cold in here, but your thermostat is already eternally built in. Whether you do something, whether you go touch it or not, the thermostat lever, it's going to kick back in. And so what I'm telling you is, first, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to reset your temperatures, your gauge. Meaning, there's a certain number that you get down to that kicks in your internal thermostat. 
That could be ten dollars for some people. Like, man, you got ten dollars in your account. That could be fifty thousand dollars for some people. That could be a half a million dollars a month for some people. Whatever that is, you have to go in and internally change what that number is that makes you uncomfortable. That takes work. But until you do that, then you will stop working. So that means when you hit your goal and you hear, you need to reset the thermostat. So that now, hey, look, if I if now I ain't there yet. You get what I'm saying? Meaning like if your goal was here and, and you get here, you got to say, OK, we still ain't there yet. And so now instead of kicking down, it kicks up again because it has to turn back on. Boom. All right. Now you get here. You got to reset it again so that you can keep becoming number ones on the next level. So it's easy to get to 10 on level one. But what you got to do is you got to reset that thermostat level so that you can go to level two, but you got to be a one again on level two. Boom. And then you go up. Ju, ju, ju. And so now you do this for this whole time. So, so long because the body, it's a body, right? We're wearing this body. This body has to rest. It has to take breaks. So what I do is we, we make sure that on this grind, we probably take a, a break every once or, or two weeks or every month for sure. You get what I'm saying? You take a break, you pull back, you let the body rest, and then you feed the body internally, mentally, etc. And then you come back in beast mode. So the myth of having to take, and this is all answering your question, what does a person on the next level do? That you only take a vacation once a year. You need to be taking small mini vacations throughout the year so that you can always reset. You need to, I don't care, you making money, take a vacation, take a break, two weeks every month. Boom, come back, regroup, boom, come back, regroup, boom. That way, you won't overdrive. And then every, and some people say, man, I'm going to retire when I'm 50, or I'm going to retire when I'm 65, and I'm going to grind for the next 20 years. No, your goal should be to retire completely every three to five years. Retire, just shut everything off and retire. You take many retirements throughout your life <clears throat> because who wants to be 70 years old, 65 years old? Most people that are not eating healthily are doing the right things to take care of their body so that they can look like this when they're 65, right? So when they go on the carnival cruises, they can't do any of the, the uh, excursions, right? Because the bones won't take it or they can't, you know, put their body through that type of adrenaline rest or excitement, right? So the thing is, take these many retirements throughout your life. Enjoy life as you get it. You know, my mom says, Brian, take time to smell the roses, right? And so what that meant to me when I was 22 was, hey, look, take a break. You know, it's okay to take a break. Enjoy it. Take completely off for a freaking year. Come back to it. Beast mode. Three, four years. Come back to it. Beast mode. Three, four years. And you keep doing that to where when you get to 65, 75, you're like, man, you know what? When you get to 80 or 90 or 100 or 200, I lived till I'm 500 years old. And it's like, man, I think I done done just about everything on this earth I can do, right? And so you're not waiting to do that. You're doing it now. And that's the beauty of it all. So uh, that's the first thing. So how do you do that? How do you get when so now you're, you're here and you're ready to go to the next level as an entrepreneur? The first thing that you need to do is invest in delegation, delegating your tasks. You know, but you have to know what you need to delegate in order to properly delegate it. I've seen a lot of people, they get VAs and virtual assistants, but they have no, they don't know what they're going to tell their virtual assistant to do. So you think that this person who's comfortable with making $5 or $10 an hour is equipped mentally enough to know what your brain is thinking, right? Probably not. So what we do is we have like the series of videos, like, and yeah, I sell these, right? But we have a series of videos that I created for my virtual assistants to rebuild my wholesaling business, you know, for without me being there. And it takes them about 7 to 14 days to learn it. So my guys have been with me. I've had the same VA for almost four years because I gave them a format of this is what you do at this time each day. This is what you do at this time each day. So my marketing <coughs> game is on lock. Every, you need to be doing 99% of what you're doing in your business should be marketing. You should never have to sell your product. You should be marketing so much to where the right customer that's looking for what you have sees it and they call you to give you money. That's what it's about. 99% of your business on the next level is marketing. And if you're not marketing, you're dead. You don't exist. The difference between being good, so here you're good, but up here you're great. The difference between good and great is exposure. That's the only difference between good and great. So the more exposure. So now my VAs, 99% of the time, they're beast mode all over social media. 
credit. They can't go offline and market for me, but there's a whole world of billions, you know, hundreds of millions of people on the internet. I want all of them to know me. Right? I want all of them to hear about me. That's my goal. So I market on social media. I market on groups. I market on LinkedIn. I market on YouTube. I market on Vimeo. I market on Twitter. I market every, I market on emails. I market on, virtually on text blasts. They're like, buy die, tell me to stop. You're going to hear from me until you change your phone number, delete me off social media, right? Uh, de- block my emails. Or, you know, and my phone calls. You're going to hear from me until you tell me to stop. And if you tell me to stop, I'm going to say, are you sure? By the way, take a look at this, right? So the key to it is exposure. <laughs> 99%. Boom, 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 boom. Market. Be the dominant force in the market space. Don't read the news. Be the news. You get what I'm saying? Don't read the news. Be the news. And when you make it a point to be the news, meaning, like, this is my value that I'm breaking. I'm telling you this. This is what I'm doing. If you like it, click here. If you don't, share it, right? <laughs> Some people say, if you don't like it, delete me. If you don't like it, share it with somebody that <coughs> like, okay? You know, so that's my MO, man. Awesome, awesome. Man. <laughs> awesome, awesome, man. Hey, I really, really appreciate that, Brian. Um, I'm sure that my audience will love that. And hey, thank you so much, so much, Brian, for your time um, to take the, you know, obviously the valuable your time out of your day to be able to do this with me, man. So um, I, I, I just want to thank you. And I believe everything happened for a reason. I believe there's a reason why we connected. So, but uh, I appreciate it, Brian, a lot, man. You just don't know how much I appreciate you um, being here and uh, doing this interview with me a lot. If it's okay, if anybody else that's looking for, you know, ongoing daily I would say mentoring like this um, you can go to www.theharrismastermind.com t-h-e-h-a-r-r-i-s mastermind.com and uh, we would love to see you as a member on our 2018 uh, mastermind group and beyond so um, I want to thank you so much for allowing uh, me to share my passion and my joy with your audience and I'm going to go ahead and speak this for you the rest of the world (laughs) on your show. Can you tell everybody the name of your show so they can know what to look for and how to find it too? Because I have an audience that's going to see this as well. Gotcha, gotcha, great. Yeah, um, so basically Brian Brian Wade is that I'm pretty much just on YouTube and all you need to go is is Wholesale to Million. And the reason why I named that name is is pretty much wholesaling is what got us to our million. So it's Wholesale to Million. So you guys can go on there. Um, Brian, I need to take action. What you said is I need to be all over the place because right now on social media, that's pretty much the only thing that I'm active on is YouTube. It's 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 I love it's, sharing it's, it's, and also too is it's building an audience. Yep. That's why I um that's why I started the channel. Uh, now back to you, Brian. Is how do people get a hold of you? I know you mentorship and, and things like that. So what are some good ways for people to to reach out to you and and get some mentorship from you? Okay, so that's one way. The HarrisMastermind.com. I appreciate you you uh, sharing that with them. The HarrisMastermind.com is one way. The other way is you can find me on you can follow me on uh, social media. Brian B R Y A N S Harris. And uh, it's also, uh, we have a fan page, Brian Dollar Sign Harris. I'm on Instagram, the underscore Brian underscore Harris. And then also our email. You can shoot us an email at REI Mentor at homesfor10k.com. That's R E I M E N T O R at homesfor10k.com. And I want you to write this one down. If you're watching this and you are a real estate investor and a wholesaler, I want you to remember this one. You need this course. It's the number one wholesaling course in the world. You will never have to buy another wholesaling course again if you uh, go here. And you go to www.howtoflipcribs.com. So H-O-W-T-O-F-L-I-P-C-R-I-B-S.com. You guys, thank you so much, Brian. And uh, if you would send me all those links... I will. So I would drop it in the descriptions. That way you guys don't have to, you know, search it or anything like that. You guys just click on it. You guys, I watch his, his I, I watch his stuff. He's the guy that's not just teaching, but he's actually doing it. And you, if you guys want to change your life, just like he said, first you got to change yourself, then your life will change. That's right. And uh, I can't think of a better person, you guys. So if you guys do uh, want to get into this business and want to mentor, hit Brian up. 
And as you always say, it's your boy. It's your boy, B. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I had a great time. Thank you so much, man. You have a wonderful Friday and a great week. And thank you so much. You too, my man. Thank you so much.